I work alone a lot of the time. But even when I'm alone, I'll often have someone who wants to talk to me. Sometimes it's people that uh, I'm working for, and sometimes it's people I'm, where I'm working in their house. But a lot of times we'll, get, we'll go through sports, and sometimes we'll even get into the Bible. I try to avoid that because I don't, want, I don't really have the attention span when I'm working to be able to focus my thoughts there. But recently I had someone that said, how can you believe what's in the Bible? It contradicts itself. And the guy I was talking to went to two verses in particular that said, it's obvious right here. In an obvious way, it contradicts itself. And these two per verses in Proverbs are right next to each other. And they make no sense because they contradict each other. And once I realized what he was talking about, I, I, I went, no, that's not really true. But first, let's turn to Proverbs 26. Because Proverbs 26 is where he went. And Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. We'll show how they contra don't contradict each other and how if we keep them in our minds, their lesson helps in our everyday lives. This is a thought that, thoughts that we probably should keep topmost in our minds, especially when someone's trying to start an argument with us. Proverbs 26, 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. And verse 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. You know, correctly understood, as I pointed out to him, these actually don't contradict each other. They complement each other. They work together. You know, these two facts will help us see how the verses deal with the same subject, but under different circumstances. That's the key. First, we'll look at the meaning of the language used. And second, we'll consider the last part of each proverb, something he was skipping over totally. He was saying these say the same thing, only the exact opposites. The, but it's the end of the proverb with, which explains the circumstances in which you determine what you're going to do. Now, the Hebrew word for fool literally means silly, while the word for wise can mean cunning. And Proverbs 26.4 tells us not to answer a fool according to his folly, lest we be like him. In this situation, the person's silly argument or question, you're descending to his level and end up in a pointless quarrel. Now, I've ended up in a, most, I've ended up in a few of those over my life, and they don't go anywhere. You might even open yourself up to personal attacks. This can be really dangerous on something like, say, social media. You've seen where you're, you're going back and forth with somebody. I don't do this, but I've seen other people do this, where they're arguing back and forth, and they say something which is twisted against them. The person asking this type of question doesn't want to be taught. They don't really want to converse. Instead, they're spiritually immature, and they just want to argue their point. This is what I believe. This is why you should believe it. Often, like I said, people do this just to cause conflict or make us look bad. An example of not answering is given in Luke 20. Go to Luke 20. Starting in verse 1. have a new Bible where I don't automatically turn to uh, immediately to the... Too many notes in it, so... The Pharisees in this account were not seeking to learn anything from Jesus, who's talking here. They were trying to get him to say something they could twist and use against him happens on one of those days he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel. 
that the chief priests and scribes together with the elders confronted him and spoke to him saying, tell us by what authority you're doing these things or who is who gave you this authority? What did Jesus do? He answered and said to them, I will ask you one thing and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? And they reasoned with themselves saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, well, why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us. For they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered, they did not know where it was from. And Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, rather than answering their question, Jesus asked them a different question. Looking at the context, we see the brilliance of the response. For they could not answer without condemning themselves, and that was what they were trying to do to him. Since the Pharisees didn't answer his question, the discussion was dropped. You know, this can be put forward in answering an unasked or unnecessary question, too. You know, somebody is coming to, I remember Mr. Fay. He used to read to us back when he was answering questions for uh, people who had uh, written or called in. He would sometimes read the question and the response to the, uh, to the congregation. And a lot of times you got a really deep answer. But sometimes he gave a, an answer which didn't answer the question at all. But you could tell from the way the question was framed that they weren't asking the question because they wanted to know the answer. I didn't realize at the time until I asked him why he was doing it, answering one way sometimes and another way other times. Proverbs 26.5 tells us under a different set of circumstances we should answer the silly or immature person according to his folly, responding to his line of reasoning. The answer we give should expose the weakness of his thinking. He needs to be challenged, that thinking, for the person's sake, lest he be wise in his own eyes. In other words, Lest he think of him so, so cunning, his reasoning is sound. We can turn to 2 Corinthians 11. This, this, this point is illustrated by Paul in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 16. Certain men in Corinth claimed to be true apostles of Jesus Christ, but they were false apostles. Verse 13, for Paul to remain silent at this time would have given tacit approval of those men, accepting that they were Christ's disciples, men who were seeking to lead the church astray. Both they and the people around them would have considered their, th their thoughts superior to Paul's. Or furthermore, they would have gathered influence on people that would have caused all sorts of harm. Under these circumstances, Paul responded somewhat sarcastically, especially in verse 19. Verse 16, I say again, lest no one think me a fool, if otherwise at least receive me as a fool, that I may also boast a little. What I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many boast according to the flesh, I will also boast. Verse 19, for you put up with fools gladly, since you yourselves are wise. For you put up with it, if it makes you, if it brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts him, himself, if one strikes you on the face, to our shame I say, we were too weak for that. But whenever anyone is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. These men were boasting of their qualifications. 
So Paul lists his personal qualifications for serving as Christ's minister, which of course far outweighed theirs. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak of a fool, as a fool, for I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. In Paul's writings, he did not normally draw attention to himself and his deeds. He made an exception here because it was necessary to expose the cunning of the imposters and who they were. Paul answered these false apostles claims so that they and others would see just how shallow and weak their claims were. How do we determine? Because often if I'm trying to go by my own thoughts, especially when someone's trying to start an argument with me, how do I determine? Ask for guidance. Ask God for guidance. Hard to do in the midst of an argument, so you almost have to be planning this beforehand. These, these proverbs do not illustrate contradictions. You know, taken together, they explain two different methods of, like I said, of handling the same questions and statements of people who lack spiritual maturity. The Nelson Study Bible summarizes it this way. The phrase, according to his folly, appears twice as a play on words with two shades of meaning. On one hand, avoid the temptation to stoop to his level. That is, don't use his methods, lest you be like him. On the other hand, it means avoid temptation to ignore him altogether. Respond some way or else he'll become wise in his own eyes and his folly will get worse. This is not a question of someone who is asking you a question and seriously wants to know and understand. But the fact that we need to know when and how to apply these principles and to use the wisdom that comes from God. So, as all questions of how we need to do this, it comes down to asking him for wisdom, studying our Bibles to learn for additional advice and the examples that help us to apply these principles. To quote another proverb, only a fool tells, tells all he knows.